John Gill, Revelations chapter 2, verse 13. Position of the New Testament in three volumes in which the sense of the sacred text is given. Doctrinal and practical truths are set in a plain and easy light. Difficult places explain seeming contradictions reconciled and whatever is material in the various readings and several oriental versions is observed. The whole illustrated with notes taken from the most ancient Jewish writings, volume 3 by John Gill, printed in London in 1748. Revelations 2, verse 13. I know thy works, etc., both good and bad, and which in that pure part of this church were opposed to growing corruptions of Antichrist were for the most part good. And where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, Pergamos was a city very much given to idolatry. Here Satan reigned while it was pagan, and so was a seat emblem of the idolatrous church of Rome. Senus, P-A-U-S-A-N-I-A-S, says the country the Pergamese inhabited was sacred to the Calabri, that's C-A-B-I-R-I, the chief gods of the heathens. And the same writer observes that A-E-S-C-U-L-A-P-I-U-S particularly was worshipped at Pergamos, and hence he is called by Moshal the Pergamon god, to his temple here, men used to go to different parts of the world for cure of diseases. Hence, this A-N-T-I-O-N-I-N-U-S, the empire went for such a purpose, a Herodian relates, and this being a common thing. Hence, Lucian Scotonly, Scotonly says that a E S C U L A P I U S had a apocryphal shop at Pergamos, as Rome and its dominion were the principal seat of the church in this period of time. It may well be called Satan's seat of throne, not only because it had been the seat of the Roman emperors, the ten horned and the seven headed beast. Chapter 13, verse 2. But because it was the seat of Antichrist, which the great dragon Satan gave him, whose coming was after the working of Satan, and he was influenced by him, and who, like Satan, exalted himself above all that is called God, yea, placed himself in the temple of God, the church, as God, showing himself to be God, assuming that power to himself that only belonged to God. Moreover, he may be called so for his enmity and malice against the saints and for his art and subtlety and insidious methods to ensnare and destroy them. Now to dwell where such a one has his seat, his throne has a kingdom, power and authority must be very uncomfortable as well as dangerous, and required great care, circumspections, and prudency, how to behave. And yet to the accommodation of this church it is said, And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith. The pure members of this church are the two witnesses, which rose up at the beginning of the apostasy of Rome, and bore the testimony against it, and for the truth, and continue to do so amidst all the corruption and persecution of that state. These are the two olive trees that through the golden pipes of the word and ordinances empty the golden oil of gospel truths out of themselves, pure and incorrupt, and the two candlesticks that hold forth the light of the gospel in the darkest times of popery. These held fast the name of Christ, or the gospel, and denied not, but confessed the doctrinal of faith in the worst of times. 
they had the truths of the gospel in their possession, which were clear and valuable to them. And whereas there was danger of losing them, they held them fast with great courage. The strength through the greater number was against them, and they were attended with reproach and persecution, even in those days where Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Antipas is the proper name of the man. So a son of Herod was called, even he that beheaded John and mocked Christ. And there might be a man of this name at Pergamos that might suffer martyrdom for the gospel of Christ, and who was an emblem of the confessors, witnesses, and martyrs that suffered for Christ in this period of time, though through much opposition. 656. To the popes of Rome, for Antipas is the contradiction of Diopater, A-N-T-I-P-A-T-E-R, and is the same with Antipas, or Antipapas, that's two Ps, which signifies one that is against the Pope, an opposer of the Holy Father, and so intends all those that made head against him upon his rising and revelation. And when he assumed the power he did to himself, such as the Waldenist, W-A-L-D-E-N-S-E-S, and A-L-B-I-G-E-N-S-E-S, particularly who set themselves against him, openly declared that the Pope was Antichrist and that his government was tyrannical, and his doctrines the doctrines of devils, abominable and and fabulous, for a faithful testimony against all his corruptions and interventions, and became martyrs in the cause of Christ, many thousands of them being slain for his sake within the dominions of this firstborn of Satan. The Alexandrian copy reads, Antipas, A-N-T-E-I-P-A-S, and his name is left out in the Syriac and Arabic versions, unquote. End of John Gill, Revelation, chapter 2, verse 13. This is brought to you by Discovering the Scriptures, being read directly out of the ancient texts by Dr. Peter John.